and the name of my business is Sparrow's House. Um, Sparrow's named after my cat. We say, if anyone has a cat, they probably know. We say it's Sparrow's House and we just get to live there. That's right. So when I was trying to come up with a business name, I wanted something personal. Um, for a while I was throwing around like Alley Cat, but I don't go by Alley, so I'm like, I'm not gonna, no. <laughs> so I went with Sparrow's House and, um, but I'm a woodworker. So I do all custom woodworking. So she's made out of wood here. Okay. And um, everything, I just everything is custom. So whatever a client wants, I try to be able to give it to them. The past couple of years, it's been pretty heavy into custom cabinetry. Wow. And it just kind of seems like when you share something on social media or something, and people see that, then that's what people want. So then that's what you do. So then that's what you share. So then that's what people want. You know. And yeah. so that just kind of seems like where it is right now <laughs> okay and then tell me a little bit about sparrow since it is sparrow's house yeah. i noticed that there's one eye left yes one she, eye? she only has one eye and this is why i wear waterproof mascara all the time because i just never know when i'm gonna tear up oh. bless her little oh sorry bless her heart she's all oh, she'll be 13 in may okay um i found her when she was itty bitty like a pound and a half maybe four weeks old in the woods and long story short, if she would have been a full grown cat, I probably would have been like, bye. Uh, I was not a cat person, but since she was so little, I lured her over and her right eye was pretty badly injured. I think she was born with some sort of eye injury mm. and um, it was pretty gross. <laughs> but anyways, I scooped her up and I was with my mother-in-law and we're like, well, we gotta take her to the vet so they can fix her. And we go to the vet and I'm like, here you go. And they're like, that's not how this works. Like, <laughs> you found her, she's your problem. It's, you know, a million dollars to fix her. And I'm like, we don't have that kind of money. And long story short, we found another vet who's like, bring her in, let's see if she has vision in her right eye. And she did, and so they removed her left eye um, as a teaching surgery. So it was only the cost of materials, so it was affordable for us. And um, so then I named her Sparrow for the him, his eye is on the sparrow. Mm -hmm. And so I just felt like if he's watching over this little bitty cat who should be dead really out in the wilderness, it's just a good reminder that he's always watching over all of us too. Beautiful story. I <laughs> love that. And Thank you. Is it she or he? She. She, I'm sorry. <laughs> she changed your life completely because sure look at the did. business. I the know. Name. Yeah. And now I'm kind of a cat person too. So. Welcome to the club, ma'am. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> You're welcome. still a dog person, but yes. not. Actually, but your heart like, opened up some more. Yes, for sure. I yeah, so that. she's fun and she hangs out in the shop with me <laughs> sometimes and so it's fun to have her around. I love that. And now tell me about you, your childhood. What was that like and how has all of that led you to where you are today? Um, oddly enough, walking up the stairs to come here, I was having like childhood flashbacks. It just, it's a really old building, I'm <laughs> assuming, and yes. still kind of feels and smells old. Yes. And um, my dad is an attorney. And so when I was growing up, he, his law office was in a really old feeling, smelling building <laughs> yeah. up the stairs. Mm -hmm. And so I remember going to visit him at work or going to work, you know, <laughs> filing and shredding papers in elementary school. Um, and just like the smell and the feel. And so it was kind of comforting walking up the stairs oh, to come that, here. That's great to hear that. That smell <laughs> yeah, can bring you good. back. If you only have some of the orange dial hand soap, if that would have been in the bathroom, that would have. Actually, it just ran out, but we have a different one. But we had that. We did. I think it comes with. The, this, right? Yeah, it's just like it's left over. <laughs> Mandatory. A hundred years ago. So, um. I think I've just always kind of had this entrepreneurial spirit, wanting to make money. I just, from being little, you know, asking my dad, is there anything I can do to come to the office and help around and make some money? Um, in, I think, second grade, I was like running a friendship bracelet, you know, business with the, with the braiding of yes. the, or like the beads. The beads, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, before Taylor Swift made them cool. Yeah, I was, you made them I cool. I was rocking. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Charging like per inch or per bead. Okay, girl. We love that. <laughs> and um, then I had a job as soon as I turned 
16 or even, you know, younger than that. I was just finding like little odd jobs to kind of make money. I mean, money. you said your dad got you like your little job there. Mm -hmm. in yeah. The office. So there was always something available to do. He always had something that could be done. So my sister and I would go and do in there. So I'm the youngest of two. My sister's oh, a couple years older okay. than me. Okay, the baby. Uh huh. I grew up in Northeast Ohio. So like almost right in between Cleveland and Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. so, oh yeah, right up there. Mm -hmm. So cold. So when people hear like, it's so cold, I'm like, relax. You don't have lake effect <laughs> snow to deal with. It's cold up there. Um, but so anyways, and then yeah, just kept kind of working in through high school. My mom always did crafts with us for our birthday parties. She would always have some sort of fun craft to do. I remember one year we did embossing. Um, so like you get this special ink and you use a stamp and you ink and then you put a powder on it and you can uh, use a hair dryer and it makes it like puff up. So kind of like puffy wow. ink. And so just other little things. My grandma taught me how to sew and how to knit. And so I've all, just always kind of used wow. my hands. And then um, as an adult, my husband gave me a Cricut machine? paper cutting machine yeah. one year. And so I started getting into that and then making stencils to make wooden signs. That was maybe like 11 or 12 years ago. And I'm like, this is, this is fun. I'm kind of good at this. And it was when, you know, like the thankful, grateful, blessed, like all of the like Hobby Lobby sign thing uh, was like really coming. Blowing up. It, and so I'm like, I can do that and mine can be better and it's handmade and this and that. And so I kind of started getting into that. And then we moved here 10 years ago and um, I actually was a teacher. I was an elementary school teacher and I, but I still kept making these crafts on the side and then I started getting into different vendor markets and you know all of the holiday shows and stuff like that yeah. and so i was teaching all day and then coming home by and night then, yeah <laughs> and then sparrow's house by night <laughs> and so in the fall of 19 well, i guess let me back up a little bit in sometime in 17 or 18 I needed a dresser for our guest room and it's just it's very small space and so I needed something specific kind of narrow and I couldn't find anything that I liked and I'm sure you've seen that Instagram reel where the audio is I was born with the how hard could it be gene I have not seen oh. it I'm sorry I'm terrible well I was born with that gene and I'm like well I'm sure I could just build a dresser how hard could it be mm -hmm. Like, who thinks that? Not me. I'd be like, <laughs> uh, no, I don't know where to start. So good for you. <laughs> and so we were having some work done on our house, and the contractor at the time was just a single guy working. It's not like it was a crew or anything. Yeah. Um, he was also into woodworking, and so I would ask him for some tips and stuff like that. And so he kind of guided me along, and so I built this dresser, and I'm like, that was cool. I like I liked what I did there. So then I went from signs, and I started building just like little – tchotchkes yeah. to do at to sell at these markets so fast forward to the fall of 19 my husband's like something has to give like I never see you you're canceling plans with friends like this is interfering and not really adding to our lives you have to pick one yes and I was like well I'm happy to retire from teaching <laughs> and um, so but we decided I'd finish out the school year which yeah. then ended up being 2020 COVID and so it was it was a little bittersweet I had a moment of maybe I'll go back is this really how I want to end my teaching career mm -hmm. um, maybe I'll go back and do it one more year and then Colin my husband was like your kids were in fifth grade like it's not like you're gonna see them next year and you know we don't know what things are going to look like and so I'm very glad that he helped you yes. make that decision yes. right yeah wow and um so that summer we had the same contractor was doing work on our house he was uh redoing our kitchen and I don't know why I was just like what do you think can we build our kitchen cabinets he used to own a cabinet making shop and he's <laughs> like I am done with that life. I don't want to do that, but I will teach you how to do it and you can do it. Okay. And so he did. It was very much the like teaching I do, we do, you do method mm -hmm. where he showed me, we did it together, and then I took over mm -hmm. from there. And so I built 
the majority of our kitchen with his help and guidance along the way. Wow. And so I was sharing that on Instagram and then just kind of went from there. And I thought I would still just continue doing the market scene and um, making signs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But then people saw, oh, well, could you build this? And can you build this? And oh, sure. I mean, I don't know how, but I'm sure I can figure it out. There's a YouTube <laughs> video for everything. So that's that was four years ago, wow. and I can't believe that was four years ago. And, and now here we are. And now here I am chatting with you. Yeah, yeah, that is so amazing, though. I can just tell, like, from your childhood, you were always a very curious girl and always wanted to learn and, like, get into things with your hands. Um, I Like, true words have never been spoken. <laughs> I was in trouble constantly. Really? I was always in trouble. But it's because I was curious, and I just wanted to know, like, see how things worked, see what was behind that curtain, see what would happen if I did this thing anyways, even if I was told not to. I love that. Um, yeah, I was definitely, I was always in trouble, but and my, I have a couple little nieces and my mom and sister always say, oh, the little one, she's just like you when you were little. Why say it like that? Right. And I'm like, well, good for her. I yes. turned out awesome. You so did. she'll be just fine. No, I love your mind. Like, I'm just like, how... Like, I wish my brain functioned like that way. Like, I could do that. Like, but I'm just like, I don't know if I could make that cute little cat of my cat. But, like, you're just so amazing, like, oh, that you thanks. can create something from your mind and make it into a physical form. That is so cool. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't work. I have definitely had some fails. I mean, that's life, um, but right? That's but you keep life. going. Yeah. You just keep every, every opportunity is a learning opportunity. That's right. There was a teacher I used to work with, and she would say, um, practice makes progress, not practice is, you know, most people say practice makes perfect. And that's not always true. Oh. So practice makes progress. And you know, progress. I haven't heard that saying, so now I'm going to say, say that. Mm -hmm. Practice makes progress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as long as you're going forward, then we're good you're in yeah. the right direction. I love that. Yeah. As far as with marketing with your, um, brand and your business how are you going about that like I know you said something about Instagram mm -hmm. what all are you doing to reach out to those potential clients and nurture those current ones that you have so I have I don't know if I've ever actually spent any money on marketing other than maybe like a five dollar Facebook ad or something yeah. but social media word of mouth that is really the only marketing that I do um Sometimes I feel like a content creator on Instagram and then I step back and I'm like, no one's paying me to make these reels. So like calm down and focus on other things. Oh, but it's for you too. Yeah. Getting your name out there and seeing the personality <laughs> behind it, right? I love doing transformation reels and Colin will, Colin tells me that when people ask what I do and he tells them, he goes, she does total room transformations. And you I, do, girl. <laughs> and I love that he says that. And so I like making reels where it's showing the before of a space and then has a cool transition and then shows after. the after of the space. That's cool that um, you know how to do that. A lot of business owners are, don't know where to start. So yeah. girl, you're already ahead of the game. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So pretty much just Instagram, Facebook, and word of mouth. Um, I have a neighbor who I did some work for last summer, I think, maybe the summer before, I don't remember, but she's referred me to a couple people, and so someone just signed a couple weeks ago, and so I sent her a little referral gift, and I apologize to anyone, like if that's happened before, if someone's referred somebody who has signed, and then I just didn't realize, but like I'm going to oh. try to do that moving forward, just yeah. to show like appreciation yes. since that is the word of mouth really is my only marketing strategy it makes a big difference and I think even on social media small business owners for the most part don't understand what a huge impact double tapping yes, <laughs> just give it a little heart well like if you're watching it anyways just boop just like it or share it or comment it or something like it's free mm -hmm. it's support you're sitting there scrolling for three hours anyways yeah make it be three hours and half a second um because you know the, the algorithm and i don't even understand how algorithm i know nobody understands <laughs> it's constantly ever changing always once you think you're like okay well if i post between this time and this time no <laughs> then someone's like actually it's, it changed yes yeah, it needs to be at 2 30 a.m <laughs> west coast time like something yes so um 
That's how you, yeah, and that's just kind of it. And I think, like, this is going to be really cool. Exactly. You're going to get your clips, and you're going to have some content, you know? That's right. So Make get real this. <laughs> exactly. And get Sparrow, too, so you can throw in, you know? Yeah. I'm sure mm -hmm. people would love to see the name, the, mm -hmm. the face behind the, the face name. behind the name. That's right. Do you do put videos of Sparrow? Up oh, you better believe it. Yeah. Okay. I need started. to follow you on our uh, yes. Instagram account. Um, I started doing, I try to hide her in reels, even. So you know how in Apple Photos, if you have a photo and then you select the subject, it, it moves. like yes. So I'll do that, and then I'll like drop her in. So I'll usually, if I'm doing a transition reel, I'll do the before. I usually do the design sketch up, yeah. and then I'll do the after. And so I let it do its thing, and then the very last split second Sparrow? will be Sparrow at the end. <laughs> so I'll you know say find the Easter egg or you know, I the love, Easter Sparrow. In that at is the end. so cute. Yeah. I love your little mind, just like finding ways to include like the name brand yourself yeah. and information for everybody to see what mm -hmm. all you're up to. Yeah. So so I made this little guy. Um, I use this tool called a scroll saw. Mm -hmm. I feel like the best way to describe it is kind of like a sewing machine, but it's a, you know how in a sewing machine a needle goes up yes, and down up really and down, fast? Yeah. It's a blade going up and down mm. really fast and it's a really skinny blade. I mean, it's probably Super like this. Oh, wow. And, but you can get really detailed and intricate cuts. Oh, so I cut this on the scroll saw and so I'll make a lot of nursery signs or family name signs. I've done a lot of business logos. Have you been to Baked Bagels? I have not. Have you been down the road though and you've seen it? I don't think so. I live in Herndon, so I'm just mostly like oh, coming okay, here. Okay. Like, sometimes we'll take walks, but I'm not like, you know. We'll go walk past it sometime and their sign outside. I made their sign outside. What is it called? Baked, Baked. BKD Bagels. Wait, yes, actually I'm I kidding. did it. Yeah, it's like black. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. and that was you? Yeah, so oh I made gosh. that and then inside they have a couple signs. Um, upstairs around their champagne Look at room. You. I'm going to have to go in. That's, you're mm -hmm. my excuse to go in there now. Be like, I know her. Mm -hmm. She was That's great. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So um, I use those, you, I use a scroll saw to make that sort of thing. And so I thought that was where Sparrow's house was going to go, mm -hmm. not really the furniture and cabinetry route. And so that's why I made this little guy to kind of just show it. Yeah. And then I have um, a highlight mm -hmm. on Instagram for stories and it's Sparrow Travels. And so I'll take this little Sparrow with me whenever we travel and I'll take pictures of her. Like, Where all she's been, your yes. location, that's so cute. And on my Time Hop app this week, it's coming up, we were out west and so Sparrow was at the Grand Canyon three years ago. <laughs> um, this is my original one, it has been retired because we were in France last June. Yeah. My husband left a book bag in an Uber. Oh. And do you know where that bag is? No, it's not my bag. I don't oh, my God. But Sparrow was in the bag. And my wallet was in the bag. But I'm like, I don't care. I can replace all that stuff. <laughs> and we were hopping on a little boat for to do a river cruise yeah. for about a week. And so we tried contacting Uber and all these things. Oh and, my. you know, that's forget it. No luck. And so I'm like, oh, well, we canceled all of the cards and I got a new driver's license and all the things. I'm like, I'll just make another Sparrow. It's not that big of a deal. Three or four days later, I received a Facebook message, Instagram message, email, a website inquiry, all from the same guy saying, hey, did you leave a bag in Paris? I have your stuff. And I'm like, get out of here oh and he had he had taken a picture and sure enough it was almost I mean it's my ID and Sparrow was in it <laughs> and we you know spent the whole week well I spent the whole week like so excited and we met back up with him when we got back in Paris yeah. at the end of the week and got it back but anyways he said that he um, just googled Sparrow's house and yeah. so he that's how he was able to find me and find oh like all my social media and everything so I have since replaced her. I made a new one. Yeah. And she does have a new, this was like the original logo. Sketch, yeah. She's since been slimmed down. Oh. Her eyelash is a little more sassy. Yeah. And um, so I made a new, I have, now I have like metal ah. furniture medallions that go in rather than being burnt on. Yeah. And I washed her a couple weeks ago, so um, I need to make a new one because she like... didn't survive the washing machine. Oh, <laughs> you need to save this one for sure because she's like a good oh, luck. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, that she made it all the way through Paris and then got yeah. back to you somehow. And came back. I know. I was kind of 
mean to my Instagram followers oh. in my stories. I said, it's a very sad day. We've lost Sparrow. And like, that's all I said. So I said, really, hello, why respond? I'm like, I'm getting engagement. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, look at you. You're smart with that, actually. Mm -hmm. You're just like, oh, I so, have done it. Yeah. But you know, like, every little <laughs> trick. I let a few hours go by before I was like, <laughs> I mean, this sparrow, not the real, real yes. sparrow. She's fine. She's, she's safe at home. She's safe at home. She will live to be 35. Yes. I hope so. Me too with my plants. I know. Please. Yeah, they will live a long time. time. Why can't they be around as long as, like, we are? Like, I want to be an old lady with my cat. I don't the same wanna, cat. Exactly. Like, my memories are with you. Yeah. You know me already. I know you. I know. Like, it breaks my heart. I want to start all over. Right? No, I don't. I don't know that I can. I don't know that I can. Anyway, no. moving on, right? The waterproof mascara, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is not, but... Anyways, yeah. Um, what advice would you give to people out there? Like you, you said you're like the most you spent was like a five dollar mm -hmm. Facebook ad, right? So, what advice would you give to people where it's not like so expensive? Like, what's what's the trick that you're doing? First of all, I do not feel qualified to give anybody <laughs> advice on anything at all. Um, but if I had to say, it yeah. would be learn social media, learn how to do reels, and show up. And I even, that's what a lot of the social media marketing people will tell you. They'll just say, just show up, just post. And it doesn't even have to be a post that stays there forever, being in stories. And so I probably am not gonna post again today, but I posted this morning from the gym. I did a time lapse of the sunrise and said, good morning, have a great day. And just so that like I'm on there, so it keeps showing up. But then I do try to show my face mm -hmm. once in a while um, or I like to show myself working, yes. um, the other day, just, I mean, you know, it was a 17 second clip that I put in my stories of me just cutting some wood. Hey, and that's what we want to see. We want to see the person behind. How are you making these right. little things? I mean, I do. I do too. You know? I'm curious. Like, how do you even do that? Mm -hmm. Cut a tree and get a black Sharpie. Like, girl, I don't know. Yes, I go out and cut a tree down and then <laughs> use this scissors is to... No, no, this no. is why we need to see the process, ma'am. Yeah, so I do. I'll share even, like, process reels. So I take a bunch of, like, little clips of the recording and then kind of squish them together. Um, but this, I actually teach scroll saw. So if you really wanted to learn... I could. Um, I could learn to do that. You absolutely. Any... I feel like anybody can learn how to do anything if you have the patience and the right tools and the right teacher. And yeah, I just, people tell me all the time, oh my gosh, I can't believe you did that. And this and, this. and I'm like, you can too. Like I really, you, you really can. Thanks for believing. I mean, you really you can. can. <laughs> I do remember um, probably like 10 or 15 years ago, I was at somebody's house and the husband worked at Craftmade, is that down here? Craftmade cabinets? You're asking the wrong oh, person. Okay. I never know anything. <laughs> so he worked at this cabinet shop and I didn't think anything of it because woodworking was not even a thing. I, I would never even thought I would in a million years. And he built their pantry. And I remember saying, what do you mean he built it? Like he built that it's beautiful and amazing. And she's like, well, yeah, I mean, he built it. Someone has to build cabinets, like, and he did it. And I just was like, I don't believe it. And I just remember being so amazed that he did it. And I actually saw him a couple years ago. She is a secretary for my dad now. And so mm. my dad had a dinner and a couple years ago and we were up there and I remember telling them this story and they just, they got a kick out of it. <laughs> They're like, look at me now. <laughs> right. I love that. It's like full circle. Mm-hmm. And um, so anyways, advice, I would say learn social media uh, and network. I will go to, I would still do a couple of markets, maybe like I haven't in a while, but I would. And it was more just to network um, and just get to meet other people and just be real. Yes. Like I try not to be fake. I mean, I am, I'm just real. And then I'll tell you a quick story about tell this me. headband. Please do. I took a picture of my outfit I was wearing the other day, mm -hmm. to, and I sent it to some girlfriends, a bunch of friends. And I took a picture with the headband and without, because I I couldn't tell. I'm like, it's really cute, but I don't know, should I be more like professional? <laughs> I don't know, I couldn't tell. Total mixed reviews at first, but then it was overwhelmingly no headband. Oh. And I was like, 
I don't care. I like the headband. That made your decision. <laughs> and my one girlfriend who I was like, I don't care. I love the headband. She's like, then wear it. Since when have you started doing anything because of what other people have told you to do? And I'm like, you are right. Why did I even like question think? it? Yeah. I guess I just maybe wanted affirmation that I should wear the headband mm -hmm. and I didn't get it. But I said, I don't care. I'm wearing it anyways. I love that um, because sometimes people really do doubt themselves, but it's like you forget to take your own advice and to just stick to your yeah. vision. Mm -hmm. So I love yeah. that you were like, you know what? No, mm -hmm. I'm going to put that headband on. Yeah. And it looks professional. It's cute. Yeah. Hello. Oh Fashion. Cute. Professional doesn't mean you don't have to be fashionable. That's right. I never dress up like this, though, because I'm in a workshop most of the time. <laughs> so I'm in joggers or jeans and a hoodie. And I mean, why not? Know. It's good to feel pretty some days, too. I know. I'm like, podcast. where is Colin going to take me to dinner? Yeah, exactly. Colin I'm better. looking good. Exactly. When this comes out, he better have had <laughs> dinner with you that night. That's right. Night. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I feel like I keep getting off topic from no, your no, no. original question. No, you're good. You gave Can us you good advice. Can you repeat what the question yes, was? Yes. <laughs> what good advice would you give to marketing, um, to people who are trying to do marketing and okay. without spending so much money? But I think mm -hmm. you said getting to know social media mm -hmm. knowing the ins and outs and all of that good stuff and make even even just posting a story like not every single day but mm -hmm. one in the morning one a little bit later but stay top of mind mm -hmm. with the algorithm so yeah that is and great. and again networking with potential clients but also just with members of the community so you're more than just a business name um, and I think one of the most important things is connecting with other small business owners. Yes. I think in the small business community, we are a lot of times each other's biggest cheerleaders. And even, and then so we all know how social media works. Mm -hmm. So we're commenting, sharing each other's posts on there, getting engagement up on there, referring to, you know, people who come to us or, you know, so I build furniture. I can refinish furniture. I don't want to refinish furniture. But I can. But I don't want to. But I know a couple people who do. Yeah. And so recently I had someone say, hey, we have this. Can you do this? And if it was two or three years ago, I probably would have said, yeah, I'll do it. Because I was just taking anything I could get until I kind of found my groove. Yeah. But I love being able to say, you know, I can't do that. Here are two people who can. And I'm going to say both because this one style is like this and her style is like this. So depending on what it is. Yeah. And so I know that people, other small business owners have referred me kind of in the same way. Oh, no, we don't really do that. But she might do that sort yeah. of thing. So I think just getting involved in your small business community yeah. mm -hmm, that is really great. and doesn't have to be the same industry or it can be the same industry. Mm -hmm. I mean, in Loudoun County, what do we have? Like a billion so people many. live here. There, uh, with a billion homes, like, I know there are tons of woodworkers and other cabinet makers here. I'm not worried about it. And, like, there's enough business to go around. And it's really too bad when you see, like, people being competitive to the point of, like, being nasty to oh, each no, other. Not that. And it's just, like, you're here to, we should be here to help each other and yeah. support each other and learn from each other. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. What has been your favorite project that you have been um, hired to do? Anything in general that sticks out? Like, you know what? That was fun. Or I learned something new from this. I, I do get this question a lot. Sorry! <laughs> and I never know what to say because it's almost every one I do, I'm like, gosh that was just so much fun I loved doing that yeah or I was able to learn this thing yeah um or something that stood out to you maybe something that was a challenge and you were not you were like you know what I did that um I'm gonna like get all emotional here again and oh. you will too as soon as I'm done oh talking. man <laughs> bringing me into so a few years ago um a girl that a, a friend of mine um lost a baby and but they had her handprint and footprints and so she asked me to make her a nursery sign and so I was able to use her handprint and footprint and cut them out with the scroll saw. Oh, wow. So it's really sweet that her actual handprint and footprint are on her sign but then um, I'd like to go the extra <laughs> and so I cut out like this size teeny tiny hands 
so as a surprise so that each of the parents like could hold her hand and so they always had it so um I've since made a sign for their son and like um, with his hand print and footprints too Mm -hmm. but that will always stand out to me just I love that I was able to do something more personal for them rather than just yeah, this is what you ordered and paid for, but then here's just a little something extra that I got to That's give you. so <laughs> sweet. My gosh, you really have like that personal connection with them. And you also love to go above and beyond, it seems, with clients. Like if you just say that, you put your heart into it. Mm-hmm. Like you hear the story, you hear what they're requesting, but when you actually like have a connection with somebody, you really like mm-hmm. will show that through. And mm-hmm. that's the difference between just getting something from – so and so you don't get that special touch Mm -hmm. you don't get that connection Mm -hmm. that human connection and with you Mm -hmm. you absolutely do and you feel that you're tearing up right now see girl i've had i mean several clients are are now friends and you know that i one in particular i didn't know before she found me on facebook they were new to the area and i did her project and i remember going home and telling colin i just really like this girl like i could hang out with her i wish we were friends and then we kept in contact and so we hung out once and her husband then told me you know she was saying every day you would leave i just want to hang out with her i wish you would stay longer and i'm like and so now we're friends and then there were two other clients that we were acquaintances before but didn't really know each other and then since having worked on their projects like we're now friends and we're couple friends and we'll go on double dates and do stuff and so it's really cool that i get to make these personal connections and it's not just I don't know you're hiring a task rabbit to put together your Ikea bookcase or something I don't know and I think it helps being a woman too you know it's usually the women are the ones making the decisions and so if you're hiring a man to come in and do whatever you're not hanging around and chatting with him no um I mean maybe you are and that's maybe fine. you are yeah exactly that's but totally fine but probably not yeah and so being that I'm a woman coming in and doing this I think they feel more comfortable kind I of would. hanging around yep. and then we get to chatting and you know get to develop these relationships kind of and that's and funny. that's that's really important to me too yeah so. mm-hmm. thank you for sharing that story that was very touching and just sweet yeah so even though it's a small project um you know I've done great big ones but that one is just is really sweet and I was really honored that she asked me to even do that in the first place and um I'll just always remember that one (laughs) for people who are interested in getting something done customized like that where can people find you and see your work so pretty much my portfolio is my Instagram and it's unfortunately sparrows dot house there oh, someone got it. Someone like in England <laughs> has made, you know, five posts 13 years ago. <gasps> Darn it. <laughs> um, but anyways, Sparrow's Dot House. I'm sure if you just start typing Sparrow's yeah. House, it shows up. Sparrow's House on Facebook or www.sparrow's dot house mm-hmm. um and are you sure it's not dot com no it's dot house dot house okay. i have an inquiry form on there um which i do ask even on instagram i ask people to go there so i can keep my ducks in a row ah, good girl. Not, <laughs> you know or if you have too many things going on at once um but yeah <laughs> awesome thank you um and you do customization as far as furniture goes you said what it what was it that you used to do you had mentioned back then I you switched from that to furniture um smalls yes like you signs still, yes uh, yeah I will still do, do you still do that okay I, I think people sure. forget because I haven't done it because people started seeing big things and so that is what my Instagram feed kind of became so see this is a reminder if anybody is looking for signs um, I did just get an order the other day. Someone had, and again, it was word of mouth from a guy who I made his business sign. And so his sister-in-law contacted me. She has a tiny house. And so she wants a couple signs for her tiny house. There you go. So I have that coming up that I'll be doing. But um, yeah. yeah, so, but everything is, I mean, it's not like I'm going to Home Depot and buying a cabinet box and customizing it by no. painting and color. I am 
building it from scratch. scratch. Like, yes, total that is scratch. An art right there. And yeah, it's cool because then you can, we can do anything. And it's, it's funny when people are like, well, what is it normally? It's like normally a 36 height and it's normally 24 depth. And I said, yes, normally. <laughs> can literally do whatever size you want. I mean, within reason. <laughs> yes, within reason. <laughs> uh, any size that you want. So you want it to only be 30 inches tall, we can do that. You want yeah. it to be 40 inches tall, we can do that. Yeah, okay. so I like people being able to have the options. And I'd like to include them in it. Some people are very much, whatever you think, I'm sure it'll be fine. Okay, that's fine. And then other people, you do have the other extreme sometimes mm -hmm. where they're... Yeah, very much know what they want. Yes. <laughs> um, but even like in in between, if we had a design set, but something came up, I realized I need to tweak something, I will reach out to the client mm -hmm. just to let them know, hey, this is going on. Are you okay with that? Oh, so Sometimes, step by step. Yeah. And um, this one girl who we're now friends, she said that when she was looking for a cabinet company, it was between me and this other company. But when she was chatting with me and I told her that, how I will have her along for the whole, the whole process, she said, that's what sold me. Mm. You know, this other company, I was going to give them my measurements. They were going to make the design and then just come and put it in yeah. place mm. and end of story. And just, so she said, I really liked that you were more personal you were going to allow me to be involved well, in the yeah. process. And then I also share a lot of what I'm doing in my stories. So then people can watch me build their stuff, watch me on Instagram or in person, install their things in their house. And like, then, okay, she's working on my thing. Okay, cool. There she is. Okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> Hopefully they don't use it to like keep tabs on me. No, well, no, but maybe they feel like, oh, look, that's my thing coming along mm -hmm. good I know what it's what's coming yeah but mm -hmm. yeah um, and then last question if you could leave our listeners with one piece of advice or share anything that's in your heart that you would like for them to know what would that be it can be in regards to anything <laughs> that is a, a huge and loaded question, question yeah listeners as in is it mostly small business small business yep Again, I don't feel qualified to oh, give stop. anybody. But, and I think that it, maybe that is then what I'll leave you with um, is talking about imposter syndrome. I'm sure, I don't know, maybe other people don't experience it. Maybe it's just me. Nope, I do it. I think we need to be reminded that other people do it too. Mm -hmm. And um, so I just started subleasing big shop space. So I've been working out of my home shop, which is about the size of this room. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a 2023 goal of mine to find big shop space because I just have outgrown my space at home. And it's, you know, rent around here is insane and all these other things. And I just, it never happened. Then I got in touch, got connected with somebody on social media, a small business thing, you know, just making those connections. He has 3,000 square feet Ooh. of wood shop space, and he was looking to sublease some of it. And even when I was looking for space, I'm like, I'm going to have to move all of my tools there. It's, I'm going to have to go to Winchester to find something <laughs> like affordable, you know, all these things. And it just never worked out. This guy's in Leesburg. He has 3,000 square feet of space. The use of all of his tools is included. He has a spray paint room the size of my shop and a drying <laughs> room. He has an assistant who, crazy enough, just lives one street over from me. And just all these things came into place. It's within my budget that I can afford it. And the first full day I worked there in February, I came home and cried for like the rest of the night. <laughs> And Colin is like, what is wrong with you? And I'm like, I know nothing. I know nothing. I have no business being in business. Like, I should not be charging anybody for anything. I'm crap. I'm garbage. No. All the things. Because I just had spent some time talking with this shop owner. And how much he knows just made me feel like how much I don't know. And so 
you know, Colin Romo, it's told me all the things that, you know, we would tell somebody yes. who's going through that. And it's, it's like, you know it, but you don't know it when you're going through mm -hmm. it. And so just keep going. And believe I guess. that you can do and it. And believe that you can, yeah. And I don't know, just keep, so I do think imposter syndrome comes on hard all the time. Even on the way here, I'm like, what? What am I doing? Like, who am I that anybody would want to talk to me about anything? Uh, we want to talk to you. I love it. We yes. can talk to you all day. And, um, all day. <laughs> but I just, I think everybody does kind of go yes. through that. Yes. And I wish we talked about it more with each other, mm -hmm. I think. Um, so I guess my advice would be, if you are feeling that way, do reach out and talk to somebody about it because uh, chances are that person's gonna say yeah me too mm -hmm. oh my gosh I just got over that or oh <laughs> I just had to do this big thing and I was certain I wouldn't be able to do it um, but you know yeah. put on my big girl pants and I figured it out I'm glad because yeah. and I'm glad that you made it here and didn't have self-doubt because you shared a lot of wisdom with me <laughs> oh, and I love you. your story of 